In this video, I want to address myself to one of the core questions that students ask relating to multi-agent systems, that is, what is an agent? Well, in earlier videos, in chapter one of the book, we saw a very first definition of what is an agent. What I want to do now is dig a little bit deeper into this definition and explore some of the properties that we might expect agents to exhibit. So in chapter one, we saw uh, that the main point about agents is that they are autonomous entities. Autonomy, in this sense, simply means having the capability to decide for itself how best to go about achieving its delegated goals. So our very first definition of an agent, an agent is just a computer system that's capable of autonomous action for deciding for itself how to achieve its delegated goals. And we often think of agents as being situated in some environment and engaged in a close coupled loop with that environment where they continually sense the environment, that is, they look at the environment, they get information about that environment. On the basis of that information, they decide what to do next, what action to perform next in pursuit of their delegated goal, their delegated agenda, and then acting, that is, performing some action in the environment, which typically changes the environment. Uh, on the, once acting, we then think of them sensing the environment again, think of them looking to see what the effect of their actions was, then deciding again, and then acting, and so on. So continually going around this sense, decide, act loop. So sense, decide, act, sense, decide, act, and so on. Okay? So an agent, a situated entity, an entity that's situated in, in an environment that's semi-autonomous, that's capable of deciding for itself how best to achieve its delegated goals. Uh, here's a picture to try to illustrate this. So here on the right hand side we have our agent, here's our environment, it's capable of doing things, performing actions in this environment. We can think of these things as being effectors or actuators, these are just things that do things to the environment. So our agent has a bunch of actions that it can perform in the environment which modify the environment on, in some way. The agent then gets feedback through some sensors, it gets some perceptual information, some sensor data, some perceptual data which then feeds into the decision-making process in the middle here. So, perceive or sense the environment, decide what to do, and then act. Acting changes the environment, the agent then perceives it again, so continually going around this perceive, decide, act loop. So this is an agent in its environment. Uh, we can pick up another uh, a number of um, systems which have these kind of capabilities but which we don't usually glorify by calling agents. And so here are a few uh, relatively uninteresting agents. So a classic example, this is an example that you come across a lot in the literature, is a thermostat. Okay, so we can think of a thermostat as being a very simple kind of agent. And the delegated goal, the thing that we want it to do, is to maintain the temperature in the room within some certain range. Uh, so it's perceiving the environment, it's making a decision about what to do, and then it has some actions available. And those actions might be to switch the heating on, or to switch some air conditioning on, and so on. And as a consequence of performing those actions, the environment changes. If you switch the heating on, the temperature in the environment raises, uh, rises. Uh, it perceives its environment again and makes another decision about what to do in that environment. So a thermostat, the delegated goal is just to maintain room temperature. The actions are things like switch the heating on or off. Uh, another example is a, a, a venerable Unix program called BIF. And what Unix did, this Unix BIF program did, is that it would simply monitor your incoming email. And when you had new email that you hadn't read, it would simply raise a flag on your GUI, on your user interface, to let you know that there was some unread email. And then as soon as you read it, it would simply hide that flag again. So Biff was sat away in the background, it's what's called a Unix daemon, a process that sits in the background on the Unix operating system, and simply continually performs this look at the environment, look at the incoming email, decide whether you need to raise or lower this flag, and those are the actions that are available to you. So the actions here are unlike these, these actions in the thermostat example, which are actions in the physical world, which affect the physical world, the actions in the Unix BIF program are affecting a virtual world, a software environment. In fact, what they're affecting is a GUI. Well, we don't think of these entities as being 
uh, agents. And why don't we think of them as being agents? Because the decision making they do is, is too simple. So they satisfy that basic definition we gave, they've got some delegated goal, they decide for themselves how best to achieve this delegated goal, uh, and the thermostat decides whether to switch the heating on or off, but the decision making there is trivial. I mean, in older thermostats, the decision making was so trivial that it used to be encoded in a, a bimetallic strip, a strip of metal that when it heated up would bend this way, opening a circuit, and then when it cooled down again it would bend the other way, closing the circuit, and closing the circuit would switch the heating on or off. So very, very trivial decision making. So because the decision making in these examples is so trivial, that's why we don't usually think of them as being agents. So this begs the question, what kinds of decision making capability, what attributes of decision making, what kinds of behaviours would you think an agent would have to exhibit in order to, to be called an agent, in order to, to be worthy of the term an agent? And that's the issue we're going to look at next.